Welcome to this week's episode of Monday Martyrs. Monday Martyrs. And if I remember correctly, last time we were talking over the story of a young woman named Mina who was fishing for Muslims in Indonesia. This week we're going to be looking at an older gentleman, his name's Sharak, uh, who fishes for <laughs> Muslims as well uh, in Iran. In Iran. Alright, I got my drink. I got my drink, regular lemonade this week, and I've also got uh, my Bible with me. I would always encourage you guys to have this with you because very I don't think there's going to be a video where I don't uh, dive into the scriptures. Um, and it's kind of become a tradition so far uh, just to just to dissect a verse before we get into the story and this week is no different. Um, we've got 2 Timothy chapter 2 as our first stop uh, as the first stop. Uh, before we get into before we get into the story this week, all right. Second Timothy chapter two. I don't know. Why I'm talking like this. You can always pause the video and just get there. Uh, I don't really have to give you guys time, do I? Second uh, Timothy chapter two, verse seven. So, Second Timothy, it's uh, it's Paul's second letter. Uh, whoa, go ahead and draw. Uh, is it not going to let me draw? Hang on. Technical difficulties, people. Thicken this up. All right. So this is Paul's second letter to Timothy. Um, and he's giving and he's sending this letter uh, from jail. As a lot of his letters were sent from jail, uh, which should tell you something about Christianity and how the world treats it. Think on it. Um but we'll look at what he has to say here in verse 7. He's given him some instructions. Uh, he's given Timothy some guidance um, about endurance, about enduring faithfully to the end, no matter what comes your way. And so we're coming to the conclusion of that thought when Paul will start in verse 7 and say, Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. Think over what I say. The Lord will give you understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead. Remember Jesus Christ risen from the dead. It's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to go through pain and suffering for the faith when you remember that you're following after the one that beat death. All right, that's why Jesus would say, don't fear those that can only kill the body because you are in service of the one who can resurrect the body. So remember Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, the offspring of David, as preached in my gospel, for which I am suffering. All right, what is it? What is it that Paul is suffering for? Not a doctrine, not a theology. He's suffering for a person. He is suffering for Jesus Christ, risen from the dead. It's also much easier to go through trials and tribulations when you remember that you're doing it in service of a person that gave everything for you that gave everything for you for which i am suffering bound with chains as a criminal as a criminal all right they are treating paul as if he's actually committed a crime when all he's doing is spreading life He's spreading the life of Jesus Christ to anyone and everyone in his life. And how did what, what did he get paid with in this life with chains, a jail cell, and eventually beheading, eventually beheading. And the other 12 apostles went the same route. So if you're under the delusion that Christianity was created as a way to control people and control masses and get rich quick and all these other... No, it was not. It was not. The founder, Jesus, was strung up on the cross. The apostles that followed after him and set up the church, Paul gets beheaded. The others die through various means of torture. This was not done as a get-rich-quick scheme. This was done because Jesus is the only way to the Father. It's the only way to the Father. And 
I just love what he says here about being bound with chains as a criminal. Like, you're not getting out of this, Timothy. This is what it comes to. All right, if you're going to follow Jesus, that result is very, very likely. Very likely. More and more here in America, even if they're not going to treat you like a criminal, which is happening more in America, you will lose things. All right, people are going to start distancing themselves from you. All right, friends, family, coworkers, all that. You're going to start distancing yourself from you. All right, but look, Paul's saying he's bound with chains as a criminal, but the word of God is not bound. The word of God is not bound. And who is the word of God? Who is the word of God? That, my friends, would be Jesus. All right, Jesus Christ is not bound. He's not bound. All right. Therefore, all right, because of this, because of the fact that I serve Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead, the one that I'm suffering, because of the fact that I serve him, I endure everything. I endure everything for the sake of the elect, for the sake of the elect. That, that's Christians, not just Christians, but those that would become Christians, that they also may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory, with eternal glory. The saying is trustworthy, for if we've died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, listen up, American Christians, if we deny him, he also will deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Amen and amen. For he cannot deny himself. For he cannot deny himself. All right, we're going to see that principle played out in the letter or in the story this week. Um, we're going to see that played out. All right, and there is one other place uh, that I wanted to go. Uh, let me see. I believe it's. Let me see. Scroll up here. Second Corinthians. If it'll work for me. Yep, Second Corinthians. Uh, I had the paper where I had this written down. I guess I'm not as organized as I should have been, huh? Uh, 2 Corinthians, I believe it's chapter 13. I believe it's chapter 13. Uh, yep, chapter 13, verse 8, right here. All right, so let me go ahead and pull up my web capture again. Give me a full page. Come on. All right, there we go. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, chapter 13, verse 8. Look at what Paul says here. Let me draw. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth, but only for the truth. All right, and you really should read... Second, it's the conclusion of first and second, really. Um, but just look at the principle there. We can't do anything against the truth. All right, and again, who is, who is the truth? All right, the truth is Jesus Christ. All right, you can't do anything against the truth. He is the truth, and he is all-powerful. He has all power in his hand. You can't do anything against that kind of truth. The only thing you can do is do things for that kind of truth. Right? All right, we're going to see that played out in in this story uh in this week's story as well. All right? The fact that if you endure, you'll get the reward of Jesus Christ and that you can't really do anything against him. If you are working against them. Alright, so we're going to switch back over here. And I will be right back. I'm going to go get a charger. I'll cut that out though. Back. Alright, so hopping into this week's story. From Iran. 
summoned by security officials. All right, gotta be sure I'm not, that my video isn't cutting this off. Let me make sure, no, not insert. Let me make sure I got my, my pens. Uh, let me make sure I got my, my highlighters. Let's go ahead and go full screen. Drop down a draw menu. All right, summoned by security officials. Chirac is the guy that we are following in this story. Chirac came to know Jesus Christ while struggling with drug addiction. That's an amen. <laughs> Just right off the bat, that is an amen worthy statement. All right, that Jesus came and snatched this man up when he was in the midst of his drug addiction. Broke it. All right, again, Jesus Christ is the truth. And this truth has all power. He has all power in his hand. You got drug addictions? All right, then lay him down at Jesus' feet. And not just drug addictions, but also just what I'm going to call self-medicating. Self-medicating because life is, you know, too much. You know, let Jesus carry you. All right, you don't have to get carried off in a comfort uh, you know, in the arms of, in the arms of weed or vape or whatever, like, you don't need that stuff, you don't need that stuff, it's expensive too, like, let Jesus carry you, man, let Jesus carry you. After overcoming his addiction and placing his trust in Christ, the former Muslim began leading his own addiction recovery group, leading his own addiction recovery group, I'll talk about that for a way to fish. All right, talk about that for a way to fish, man. He's going back to get fish that were like him. Walking participants through a 12-step program that acknowledges a higher power without mentioning God or Jesus. In Iran, where it is illegal to leave Islam, that's the only way he can operate. <clears throat> now, this is going to sound weird, right? That he's, that I'm celebrating this dude who's running a 12-step program that acknowledges a higher power without mentioning God or Jesus. When, if you recall in my previous episode, what I said was that you got to actually mention the name of Christ. Well, as you'll see, he doesn't exactly follow that rule. <clears throat> this is fishing with wisdom, not fishing as afraid. All right, and we'll see that moving through. In Iran, where it is illegal to leave Islam, that's the only way he can operate. Group leaders like Chirac know that if they're caught leading Muslims to Christ, they can be charged with acting against with acting against national security. Acting against national security. A common charge against Christians in Iran. So again, for Christians that want to make out, want to make the Biden administration out to be the worst thing that's ever happened in the world, in the history of Christian history ever, it's not. Is it good? No. Is it even past a one? Out, out of a one out of ten, if ten's the most difficult, is it even a one? Uh, uh, I, I wouldn't say so. Uh, so when an Iranian security official suddenly summoned Chirac to his office to discuss his work, Chirac had a good idea of what to expect. Again, he's prepared. He had a good idea of what to expect. Many of us don't. Many of us don't have a good idea of what to expect following Jesus. And again, that's, that's the point of this particular series, to show you what it could mean, but also to give you the hope and encouragement to see how Jesus works in his people when they are fully about building his kingdom. Chirac had a good idea of what to expect. The security official knew Chirac had become a Christian and wanted to prevent him from sharing his faith with others. All right, so right there, he wanted to prevent him from sharing his faith with others, which off the bat means that this guy um, is not going to be pacified. All right. Not going to be pacified, at least not, not easily. All right, his goal is to get you to stop talking about Jesus. And if your goal is to keep talking about Jesus, then that will naturally create continued conflict, yeah? Yeah, get, get used to it. It's like that in America, too. People are perfectly okay with you being a 
quote unquote Christian here, but the second you start actually spreading it and trying to get people to repent of their sins and follow Jesus, well then you're then you're too much. Then you're too much and we, we gotta stop that. He tried to corner Chirac with his questions during the interrogation, but the Holy Spirit gave Chirac the right words to say. Gave Chirac the right words to say. Again, coming back. Coming back to our verse in Matthew. Coming back to our verse in Matthew. Acknowledging his role as a group leader in the city, Chirac told the official that he maintains regular contact with group members as they work to overcome their addiction. As they work to overcome their addiction. And he reminded the official that the group is tied to a well-known international organization that is officially registered in Iran. That is officially registered in Iran. You see the cleverness here? You see the cleverness of how he's, of how he's pitching this? All right, and this is what I mean when I say fishing with wisdom. Fishing with wisdom. All right. He mentions, hey, the people are overcoming their addiction. All right. Again, he's not saying it yet. But he's putting it out there. Hey, do you really even know what it is you're coming up against? All right, there are people that would still be drug addicts if not for the work that I'm doing. Are you really certain that you want to stop me doing that? And also, if that's not enough, um, I've got, I'm with a well-known international organization that is officially registered. So legally, I should be all right, or at the very least, difficult to come after. Yeah, he's, he's setting himself up. I, he's setting himself up. He's hedging his bets. He, he's playing this thing wise. Appreciate that, Chirac. Hoping to anger Chirac, the official began to criticize those in the group who had come to faith in Christ. But Chirac was not intimidated. He simply replied that Jesus seems to be helping Iranians who turn to him. Again, you, you, see, the, you see the subtlety here. You see the subtlety here. This is not preaching a blurry word. This right here is a very, this right here is a very clear message. This is a very clear message. Stated and unclear, well, I guess I shouldn't call them unclear words. I would say stated with strategic, stated with strategic language. All right, and that's okay. Strategic language is fine. Strategic language is necessary. All right, T just take a perusal through the Gospels and see how many times Jesus doesn't answer a question straight. A lot of times he'll answer questions with questions or with statements that on the surface seem to be unrelated to what the topic was about. But if you look at the way that people reacted, they knew exactly what he was saying. Yeah, uh, fishing with wisdom. If some of these people turn to Christ for help and for deliverance to help them not return to addiction, then they've not done anything wrong, Chirac told the security official. You should be happy that these people in our country are no longer taking drugs. Drug addiction is rampant in Iran, which has the highest per capita number of opiate addicts in the world. Um, pray, for, pray for Iran, yeah? Pray for Iran? Nearly 3% of Iranians older than 15, more than 2 million people, are addicted to opiates, and many other drugs are widely abused as well. Yeah, 3% doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're talking about 3% of a nation that big, it, yeah, it equates to a lot of people, over 2 million people. That's a lot of souls trapped in bondage. That's a lot of souls trapped in bondage. Praise God for saints like Chirac that are out there fishing. They're out there fishing, rescuing people out of that. Who is it that God wants you to go after in your life to rescue, to rescue in grace? If you don't know, you should ask him. You should ask him. But look at this. Look at this, right? Drug addiction being rampant in Iran. Yeah, Chirac's right. You got two million people addicted to stuff. Uh, you got over two million addicts. Yeah, he should be happy that there are some people in the country that aren't taking drugs anymore. But just what's interesting here, interesting here, he says, look, angry at Chirac's suggestion, angry at Chirac's suggestion that Jesus could help those struggling with addiction. And the official showed him a list of 400 recent converts in the city who weren't addicted to drugs. 400. That's a lot of work. First off, first off, good job. Good job, Chirac. 
praise God for that, but 400, that's a lot. So think about this, all right? The, the security official, all right? If he, because right, he's really got a choice here, you know? Which one would he rather have? Would he rather silence Jesus or would he rather have 400 people freed from drug addiction? All right, 400 people freed from drug addiction in Christ. And he chooses, he chooses this one. He would rather silence Jesus than see 400 people freed in Christ to drug addiction. All right, that right there is the kind of attitude that you would call, uh, that right there is the kind of attitude that you would call anti-Christ. All right, that is the kind of attitude that you call anti-Christ, which is not surprising because John will tell us in the book of First John, um, I'm going to star this because this is a scripture that you guys can go look up on your own, but in the book of First John, he tells us that many anti-Christs have already gone out into the world. They've already gone out. So many people are worried about the capital A, about the capital A anti-Christ, without realizing that there are a lot of lowercase a antichrists that are already out in the world. They're already out in the world doing what they do in opposing the spiritual warfare of the saints and opposing the spiritual warfare of the saints. And you'll find this in your own life as well as you start to fish for men's souls, that there are very positive outcomes in people's lives that are happening because of because of Jesus, and yet because of the hatred for Jesus and the gospel, people would rather not have those positive effects if it meant that they wouldn't have to be in contact with the light of Jesus Christ and his gospel. Sounds crazy, I know, but it's true, but it's true, and this right here is an example of that. So angry at Chirac's suggestion that Jesus could help those struggling with addiction, the official showed him a list of 400 recent Christian converts in the city who weren't addicted to drugs. But Chirac, who disciples 80 believers, goodness gracious, disciples 80 believers. Yeah, he's definitely doing more than me. That's a fact. I mean, I, I don't mind saying it. Like, it's true. 80. Man, Jesus just... Let me disciple, let me disciple a few well. He's discipling 80 believers who came to know Christ through the recovery group, assured the official, assured the official that he didn't know those on the list or where the list came from. To which the official would ask, why are you lying? If you and your friends haven't evangelized them, then how did they become Christians? That's a fair question. That's a fair question, I suppose. If you and your friends haven't evangelized them, then how did they become Christians? All right, this is going to, the answer to this question is going to be absolutely fantastic, by the way. Listen to his answer. Chirac says, I'm ready to swear on the Bible and with God as my witness that I am not telling a lie, Chirac replied. If I or my friends were in contact with these 400 people, we would have certainly told you. Chirac then challenged the official, hoping to get more information about the Christians so he could connect with them. You give us the addresses of these people so that we can identify them and ask them how they became Christians, he said. Now, that is absolutely incredible. That's absolutely incredible. All right. So he clearly doesn't know. All right. So Chirac clearly doesn't know who any of these 400 Christians are. He doesn't know. This is the first that he's heard of it. Think of how amazing that is. Jesus allows Chirac to be arrested. He allows Chirac to be arrested so that way Chirac could get connected. So that way Chirac could get connected with potentially 400, you know, roundabout, approximately 400 uh, believers that need discipleship in a hostile environment and the enemy in trying to silence Chirac actually has done a little bit of work in connecting the body of Christ in this area 
I mean, that's amazing. That's amazing. When the scriptures say that the enemy means things for evil, but God intends them for good, this is the sort of thing. This is the sort of thing that God does. The enemy clearly meant this for evil, but God's like, yeah, I can flip that. I can flip that, not just for Chirac's benefit, but also for the benefit of 400 Christians and whoever those 401, if you count Chirac now, can reach. Can reach. But also look at Chirac's attitude here. Even while he's being questioned, even while he's being questioned, he's got the mindset to go on the offense, to go on the offensive and try to get information on these Christians to continue the work of ministry. All right, and we can we can really learn something from that, all right? When the enemy is pressing us, all right? All right, when the enemy is pressing us, all right, we need to have an offensive spiritual mindset. All right, we need to have an offensive spiritual mindset. To say I see your I see your offensive maneuver there, enemy, and I'll raise you with this counter strike. And the only way to know the only way to know what that would be is to be walking in the spirit. Is that a counter strike of praise? Is that a counter strike of prayer? Is that a counter strike of, of, of evangelism? What is it? What is the counter strike against the enemy's current play against your life? Get into the scriptures, get into your prayer closet to hear from God and see what that counter offensive needs to be. And let's see how it played out for Chirac. Surprised by his boldness. Uh, hang on, I definitely need a drink. All right. Surprised by his boldness, the official was finally persuaded that Chirac didn't know the people on the list. He then asked Chirac to help him understand who was leading so many Iranians to abandon Islam, to abandon Islam for faith in Christ. The rapid increase in Muslims turning to Christ is well documented, with an estimated 750,000 to 1.2 million Christian converts living in Iran today. Praise God. Praise God. That's a lot of people to come out of darkness and the light. That is amazing. That is amazing. Chirac gave the official an inspired response. All right. This response is absolutely amazing. All right. Listen to how he answers. He says, you cannot stop the work of God. All right. You cannot stop the work of God. Sound like something that we just went over? Sound like something we just went over, guys? Uh, 2 Corinthians 13. 2 Corinthians 13, 8. You can't stop the work of God. If a person has a dream of Jesus, or if God directly reveals himself in a vision and draws them to himself, or if he has seen a miracle of Christ and follows after him, then no one is at fault here. You cannot block the divine methods God uses to meet human beings. Absolutely amazing absolutely amazing. You can't block the divine methods God uses to meet human beings. You can close Christian social activities and house groups or put Christian workers in prison, but you cannot stop people seeing dreams or visions. Seeing dreams or visions, all right? Want to read about that? Go to Acts. Go to Acts 2, I believe. You cannot put Jesus Christ in prison. You cannot stop the work of the Holy Spirit. He is at work, and in different ways he reveals the truth. He reveals the truth. And again, I just feel the need to ask, who is that truth? Who is that truth? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. He reveals the truth to people. Can you change the hearts and inner lives of people where the Lord dwells? Can you change the hearts and inner lives of people where the Lord dwells? What a question. What a question. And the answer is obviously no. Only God can get to the inner man. Only God can get to the inner man. Doesn't matter how much we poke and prod people on the outside here. Only God can affect the inner man. All right? And this might seem like a weird tangent, but I mean, hey, this whole series is kind of a weird tangent. Um, but this right here is kind of the question and the point that I make clear whenever I'm whenever I'm sharing the gospel with uh, with homosexuals, all right, is no man, no man can change the hearts and inner lives 
of people. No, no man can do that. So when someone says, hey, I can't change, you know, when someone says I can't change, or if someone says that I was born this way, you know, I say, okay, yeah, true, true. As a matter of fact, maybe this one right here might even be biblical, all right? We are all born into sin. We're all born into sin. All right, which is why Jesus would say in John chapter 3 that every single person needs to be born again. Needs to be born again. All right, it's having the heart and the inner life changed because the Lord decided to dwell there in you. In you. That is supernatural that no man can produce, and it affects change. All right, It can change a homosexual into a person who desires to follow after Jesus. And as Chirac and his people learn, it can change drug addicts into people that are addicted to the Spirit's power. Affected by Chirac's testimony of God's power, the official, with a sense of awe on his face, immediately dismissed him. Since the interrogation, Chirac has heard nothing more from Iranian security officials, and while he knows he could be called in again at any time, he has continued leading Iranian Muslims and atheists to Christ as he helps them find freedom from addiction. He's continued leading Iranian Muslims and atheists, again, like, like, uh, like Bassam said, there are many atheists here leading Iranian Muslims and atheists to Christ as he helps them find freedom from addiction. All right, so what did he do? After after that encounter, all right, he goes back. He goes back to fishing. He goes back to fishing and disciple making. He had his adventure and then got right back to work. Got right back to work. Sharak is one of many former addicts in his part of Iran who have recently come to faith in Christ and begun work among those struggling with addiction, but not all show his boldness. Not all. There are many others who have been delivered from addiction and who are believers, said a pastor who works with Sharak, but for family, work, or personal reasons, they prefer to keep their fellowship as individual believers or as families, or only with the leaders of the group of 80, the Christians in the recovery group. Chirac is thankful that the Holy Spirit helped him respond wisely during the interrogation and that he is able to continue his work today. Iranians are being freed from their addictions and God's kingdom continues to expand throughout the country. Throughout the country. Glory be to the name of the Lord, Chirac said, for his wide, great, and unlimited work that takes place above the plans of the enemies and politicians. And politicians. Again, Christians that are freaking out over Biden. Remember that. Remember that. And consider God's kingdom is expanding throughout, all right, throughout the country. A country that has made Christianity illegal. Illegal. And how many? How many? 750,000 to 1.2 million Christian converts living in Iran today. And that's just the ones that they could confirm. All right, how do you get 750,000 to 1.2 million Christian converts in a nation where Christianity is illegal? How do you do that? How do you do that? Well, it's 2 Corinthians 13, 8. All right, you can't do anything against the truth. You can only do things for the truth. And as Paul said in 2 Timothy, that the word of God is not bound. Even if you bind Christians up, you cannot bind the spirit. Like Chirac said, you can close Christian social activities and house groups. You can put Christian workers in prison, but you can't stop people seeing dreams or visions or however else the spirit decides to reach somebody. You can't put Jesus Christ in prison. You can only put Jesus Christ's followers in prison. You can't stop the work of the Holy Spirit. You can't stop the work of the Holy Spirit. That being said, there is a way to, there is a way to dampen it. There's a way to dampen it, and that would be for believers who are called to share the message to not share the message, to not share the message. All right, and these are these are reasons. All right, 
family, work, or some other personal reasons, or some other personal reasons. All right, and like I said, I, I see reasons dancing across all three of these categories uh, between Christians that I disciple and work with. In my own personal season of life, I would say family is probably the biggest thing for me. Uh, it's probably the biggest hurdle um, in my life to kind of overcome as far as being bold for Jesus. It's easy to say things in church. It's easy to make bold proclamations. It's a lot more difficult to it's a lot more difficult to represent the truth of Jesus Christ amongst amongst your own family. Again, because you live with these people and because you have to deal with the consequences of whatever you say good or bad well, how could there be consequences for something good well dude that's what this whole series is consequences for doing good things suffering for good and lastly do not forget the fact that God's plans take place above the plans of the enemies and above the plans of the politicians so I'm just going to point out again, just going to point out again that Joe Biden and Kay Harris can't do anything against the truth. All right. Some of y'all might need me to actually write this out. All right. Joe Biden and Kay Harris can't do, can't do anything against against the truth they can't do anything against the truth but you christian definitely can hinder the outreach of truth by you not living properly by you living scared under a rock not telling people about the love of christ not telling people about the love of christ all right so learn from shirak's example man learn from shirak's example get out there and get to fishing man y'all have a good one Bringing you to Jesus' table every Thursday with Bible studies in Luke, and every Monday with stories from the persecuted church. I'll also be giving encouragement throughout the week in short form videos, 60 second clips of truth from Jesus Christ. Thanks for listening.